If I woke up a morning and I had to play the TI final, I would play the best Dota of my life. And that's all that would matter to me. If I played my very best, nothing else would matter. First thing, all the games are final. If there's a bug in a match, we're, we're going to play. We won't go back for a bug, it's just part of the game. Gemma True Sight does not reveal wards, okay? So keep that in mind. You guys probably know. Does not. Does not reveal wards, it's a bug. We heard that there are going to be some tournament for a huge amount of money. I think I got the better key first time somewhere two weeks before their first international, maybe three. Well, the first moment in which I loaded up Dota 2 was actually a complete disaster. It was a very mixed feeling for me, at least. This, this looks great, but I actually don't understand what's happening at all. Maybe one guy liked it. I thought it was pretty cool, but everybody was just like, what the fuck is this? The initial reaction, not just for myself, it was just like, this, this is in Dota. I played Dota 1 for five years or whatever, and I loved the game completely mechanics and how you move around and stuff. Six years ago, we, we just played Dota 1 all day at that time. Some things were so bad about Dota 1, but we got so used to it that it just felt, it felt natural. Changes to something that's really important to you is always hard to welcome, not in the sense that you look at it in a bad way, but you know, it's like everything's gonna change. One week after, even maybe two days after, you're gonna look back and be like, I was so stupid to even hesitate. TI was on such short notice, hey, we're gonna make a tournament, one million dollars. We were like, okay. It's <laughs> like, is this real? Prior to the event, I think it was a DK. They declined an invite because they didn't believe it was true. A lot of the pros at the time, when they transitioned, they're like, oh, well, you know, we'll just do it this one time. It's a lot of money involved and just go back to Dota 1. I thought it was a little ridiculous, to be honest with you, for playing for a million dollars. I was like, by far the highest paying prize pool of any Dota tournament. I think everyone kind of understood and accepted that n no one was going to be ready. We just went with it. We accepted the fact that this is the game now. We took it very seriously. During that time, we wanted to be the best team regardless. We didn't even want to lose anything that was, let's say, fake. We didn't care. Navi, they had a, a set number of heroes, maybe 10, 15 heroes that they played throughout the tournament. And we were choosing them by attack animation. We were thinking, okay, those guys, they have some broken attack animation. Let's choose them. We really never played in booths like that. We abused the booths. Dendi was just jumping up and like, screwing around with people every time the first blood happened or something like that. Tagil, you do this. Tagil! Tagil! We were like not realizing that we actually play for this amount of money. We were just playing and having fun. We were so confident. I remember we were so confident that we were going to win. Because I joined the game and I feel so free. When the first international ended and we saw the whole spectacle surrounding it, everyone knew that this was something that was going to come long term and other tournament organizers immediately jumped on it and wanted to run this game. Esports definitely grew a lot the next coming years after that, more than it did prior to it. As much as people dislike the changes in the beginning, they're all for the better, and I think Dota now is better than it's ever been. It just felt like this is going to be the future. You know, it set a message. This is what esports is going to be. the upper bracket semifinals, Tong Fu taking on the fan favorite Navi. When we picked Pai Chen, uh, we were sure we were going to crush the game early on. Navi's uh -oh. trailing. No, they pick it. They Pudge. took the punch. 
You can see Dendy smiling right now. Oh yeah. He wanted it bad and Puppy gave it to him. Yeah, for some reasons. That game, it didn't work out. Back in, back into the call down. Dendy binding up more than he can shoot. He will be cleaned up. Now Puppy caught out in the middle of the fight. We were getting stronger and stronger. In this point of the game, there is nothing else in the whole game that can change anything. And Tong Fu is beginning to grind Navi down. They got a five kill lead, right around 5,000 gold to their advantage. This is really troublesome for Navi. The game was on the edge and we could lose it like any moment. I was sure about that. We knew we needed to do something, so we started to try something out. Tong Fu is going to continue to push. They're not done. Mech still hasn't even been used. There's a hook. How? Brought all the way back to the base. Cleaned up by the fountain. Dandy said, this is the only way we can win the game. Us two, just doing that stupid stuff. I was like, alright, let's go. Dandy's gonna try it again, Kenny. Got him that time! See you in the base move! Whenever I saw enemy around, I would ask Puppy TP me. He would TP me and I would try hooking. Oh, there we go, the hook, got him! Uh -huh. Fountain hook, fountain hook, fountain hook. It would continue. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, just keep it up. Then the result, he kept going, kept going, kept going. It felt like, how do I say? It felt very strange. Tong Fu didn't know what to do. Like, they actually screwed up quite a lot. It's hard to stay calm. Mentally, you're panicking. Apocalypse is happening in your head. He just goes to Tong Fu. Jarkopter is egg is to siege high ground, you know. Everybody knows the simple road to victory. The game should be done as simple, but he just got removed. Oh, he got him! He got him! They're on their feet, they're chanting! All it took was one fountain hook! Powell playing gyrocopter could have simply just TP'd after the hook. He could have just TP'd back home. Then he was finally got back to the two teams, and then he was finally got back to the fact of the matter is, like a player that was on point probably would have still won that game as Jarcopter. Probably should have never gotten hooked. Probably, probably, probably. But Dora is a lot like life, you know? Shit happens, you have to deal with it. Hooking Tong Fu players with Chen Teleport was one of the most amazing things that I've done. It was uh, vicious, <laughs> and I was part of it. <laughs> I was very angry watching the game. It's not really so much against Navi as against the rules. A lot of people were saying it's very unfair or Ron, we came into the player lounge and I saw Wada screaming. That from the game, that was the biggest joke I've ever seen. The biggest fucking joke I've ever seen. There's these rules about bug abuse, but what is bug abuse and what is not. I'm still a bit salty about it, I think. Like, how can you win? How can you even be allowed to win that way? Tom Fu had that game. Is that balance? You hook a guy with eggs? It should be. Oh my fucking god. It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> Disqualification. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely it's like, over. you guys don't deserve it or something like that. And they're like, whatever, dude. Let them try this thing. They can do it. Go on, try this thing. You have to respect the skill that it took for those fountain hooks to happen. If it was completely broken and super easy to do, everyone would be doing it. They weren't afraid to try it or make it happen. I was sure the game was fair. Even after like I heard those screamings. Oh, because in, in, in our Chinese eyes, I think it's just that it's a win. It's just a win. It's just that it's not that it's a win. It's just 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 that it's a win. 会觉得对方比较，会觉得对方打的厉害，不会说因为这个东西太 bug 了或者怎么着。这也是下一年赢得 TI 的一个原因吧。但是，当时我没有找他找他们讨论过这个问题吧，我怕提起他们的伤伤心事，他们打我。
Some exploits are fun and good. This was one of them. Maybe a bit too strong, but still. It was too strong. You can discredit the game, but in reality, like, Dota is still the same. You can still win games in the most weird ways that haven't been seen or done. It's the same for everyone, so it's, it's fair for everyone, and that's just kind of a part of the way Dota tournaments go. I think I've seen that clip like at least a hundred times. It's, it's legendary. You know, the whole venue was just echoing. It was just, you know, really easy to root for, you know, our you know, fellow countrymen. That was a great part of Dota history. The meme making game, Liquid versus LGD. Best of one, loser eliminated, winner in the top eight. The draft complete, the players now selecting their heroes. And here we go. Team USA is having the home crowd behind them. I think going into that match, I don't think Liquid really you know, liked their odds very much. They were just gonna leave it all out in the field and you know, it was enough. LGD was you know, a top dog in that tournament and you know, they were you know, predicted to win. And it's gonna be a Bulba clockwork, yeah. making a comeback here. Bulba still doing pretty well mid. I actually would say it's very even. I remember Bulba. He was really, really performing on his clockwork, making some insane plays. It's against LGD China. Could there be a turnaround? It was like my first ever like tournament. This was like a big moment for me because I wanted to prove myself. This game was everything for us. We need a hook. Bulba finds one. It's gonna be on Xiaowei. And I was getting all these kills with with clockwork. I just killed. Xiao Wei when he was split pushing a Fury on. And then finally there was a big team fight in their base and I had a really good hook on like two people. At that point I couldn't really hold it anymore. I just started like getting up in my seat even though the game wasn't over. And now I'll look back and say, wow, what, what was I doing? I used to have a soundboard and my number one most clicked one was the LD part when Liquid, they won. I think it goes like this. Siler to fall, Liquid are doing it. Siler to fall, Liquid are doing it. And Bova is on his feet. <laughs> I believe that's how it goes, but it's so, it's so epic. You know, everyone loves an underdog and being able to cheer for you know, the home crowd favorite and getting behind them and all these personalities on the team, especially Sam, like it's, it's an easy personality to cheer for. He's just, you know, a kid who wants to do well in his first big tournament and, you know, take it home to his family and his parents. And I imagine he was just totally overwhelmed and full of energy and excitement and soaking in the crowd was his way of releasing that emotion. I think the fans loved it, you know. The crowd was going pretty crazy because it was the first time an American team had ever done anything, so that was pretty cool. Before that, the American scene was very, very bad. North American Dota. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. It was cool to see that everyone can beat everyone in tournaments like this, so everyone have a chance to win tournament. I like to think that game will be remembered as a turning point and it proves that anyone can really do it. I would love to see being a professional gamer is actually worth your time and like you can make a living out of it. I'd obviously like for it to be a professional sport like any of the sports out today and if they've grown it's gonna take time, first of all. A lot of the world isn't really open to like gaming and online gaming and stuff like that. And especially around here, if you talk about, oh, I'm, I'm a professional gamer, they're like, you're a what? Fear, Fear of Darkness was like an idol for all the North American players. I just respect him a lot as a person and as a player. Fear, this guy, actually, I've always known him as a American player. He's the soul of the team. When I was younger and just playing video games for fun, I didn't have an end game at all. And I thought, after a few years, it would probably be tiring. Because you're just playing all the time. 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 Because you're just playing all the time.
somehow, like it just caught on and it just became very popular and I became successful doing it. To be able to be on a top team, you need to play, you know, like six to nine hours a day at the bare minimum. The thing that happened that almost made me quit entirely was when I got my first arm injury. Like, I had no idea if it was going to heal or not, and you know, I was like really scared that my career would be completely over at that point. I think the, the most challenging part of it was the timing. The diagnoses from the doctors was kind of vague. We thought it was getting better. I was just thinking the whole time, I was like, you know, why did this have to happen to me? Like, I've been playing my whole life, and all of a sudden I just can't play anymore, right, when I have the biggest opportunity of my life. After like a month or two, I was like, okay, this really isn't going away at this point. And then eventually it's like, okay, I, there's no way I can practice right now, and there's no way I'm going to be able to compete at TI because of how much time this has already taken away. I think what kept me going after I got my injury was just, you know, like hope. like hoping that it would heal and I'd be able to play again because it's a huge motivator for me, you know, it's like I had an injury and then I missed the biggest tournament of the year because of it on a team which I had a good shot, you know, just, I just hoped my arm would heal and I'd have one more opportunity to get the championship. I have so much respect for Clinton and all the time he has put into this game and if anybody deserves to win the international, um, it's, it's him. Fear coming off of a pretty serious injury, does it do anything for the confidence of the whole team having him back and a part of it? I think everyone on our team has like the utmost faith in him to be a strong player that we know he can be. Uh, he's also our carry player, so a lot of the game rests on his ability to help us win. When Fear rejoined EG after his injury, I really look up to the way he made that team like function. I think a lot of it was on him, and he didn't get the kind of credit from the outside that I think he should have gotten. They just need a couple of kills to be TI5 champions. Fear, fully wicked sick. They're gonna bring in the Titanic as well for Fear while this push continues. Clinton has like a huge amount of experience, and I think he puts really good use to it. Whenever people ask me, like, is there any player you look up to? I mean, for sure, the way he played a core role for EG, that's that's the way I can only hope to play. It looked rough dropping down the lower bracket. They have persevered. And they will claim the Aegis of the Immortal. They are the champions here in front of their home. Right after we won and you know we're holding the trophy up in front of the crowd, everyone was cheering. We're on like home soil as well, so like everyone was, it was just insane. Everyone was yelling, USA, USA. We just sat there and just like took it all in. Didn't really have much to say. We we're just kind of just, like enjoying the feeling. Give it up for your TI5 champions, Evil Geniuses! I mean, at the current state and time, it means a lot, but 10 years from now, will people remember me? Probably not, to be honest with you, but. The fact that in this moment that I dedicated so much of my life to be a champion it means a lot to me, so I'll never forget it. Players know what to do in an instant of a second inside a game. That goes for commentary as well. If a commentator knows this is, you know, this is the moment. Here comes the Ice Blast ready for the dunk! I do think that TI is very special for everyone. History of Dora is like written at TI. Navi is about to be caught. Oh, this could be a total disaster. Thank you, man. Ravage on everyone. The black hole as well. Light of Evan turns it around. Players and casters are making the history together, of course, but if you don't put voice on what we are doing, it's worthless. To me, what makes a great call at TI is like, I'd say, raw emotion. Boxing in Ohio. Oh. Happy. Power strike on to two. There's no way. But turn them out. The point is to tell the story of the fight. You have to be able to build up to it. That itself, it's a skill that I feel only a very few people have. But now the call, there! He stops it right in the tracks! They're gonna be able to take down two! And a third ball for me home! Evil geniuses! They I think a good crowd is everything. At times, definitely to the point where you can't really hear the game sound. It's always like an interesting challenge finding the balance between egging them on and feeding into that passion, but not letting it like 
completely wash you away. I always want to ride the wave that's the crowd. If they're that loud, then I'm, I'm matching them. Like, I will try and keep up. Bulba wants to open up. Tucky's dragging him back. Nixon holds Bulba away. Joe, nice low right life. Flicks. He can't Jakuchi. Nice. He can't Jakuchi. Liquid get first blood. That's what the thing is about classic good casting. Like, every single time, I still get goosebumps. Everything hangs in the balance. It all comes down to this. The last game of the international three finals between Alliance and Navi. Fifth game, everything on the line. One more game, two million dollars on the table. Winner, first place at the international, the ages and the prestige of being the best Dota 2 team in the world. The, the big one, the million dollar dream coil. Everybody remembers that place. I can remember every single word Luminous is screaming. Alliance, I'm doing it! They need a little more for those to fall! Don't! It's Jeopardy! There's a glimpse! It's going to be their last chance. All this hype is building. The TPs are canceled. The million dollar dream coil has already happened. They're pushing in. BKB, they They're won gonna this round! They're going to do it! They're and it's just like, it. Alliance is doing it! The kings of the kings of the dark! Alliance wins! They win! The Alliance just won 1.4 million dollars! Every time I think about it, I get the shivers. It's just so good! If you have the same game commentated by different people, it will be a very different story for each commentary because e each commentator will highlight something different. The way that Toby does Black Hole, the moment that Enigma is picked, he's like, okay, let's do this, I'm ready. You can see his whole face, it lights up. Even though that it's become a meme and died as a meme, he still gets giddy. This is gonna be it, you can, he's ready for it. They're losing the Rama. Black Hole, big one from Fly, coming a follow up into a call. Let the spin skirt dump one with a double kill. It's an accurate slam, it's a disaster. Oh, Toby is also really good at commentary because he used to do acting jobs, so he knows how to use his voice without depleting it. And I think the Korean commentators do that as well. They get singing lessons or voice lessons so that they can shout. There was some clip on YouTube, uh, the Korean casters, the hype level was, it wasn't just there, it was like here. <laughs> and it was just this boring farm fest that went on for forever. And meanwhile, there's just these two Korean casters that are going crazy over every little thing. Oh! They're bored out of their minds, but they're still yelling. They basically have to entertain uh, the entire uh, Korean audience or whoever was listening because the game was so dull. Oh my god, I love that clip so much. Austin Major. At Finem versus OG. It was the grand finals. It was an insane game. We're playing against Mega Creeps. This was OD Pixel's moment. He starts talking on the microphone. He says some stupid shit. It makes no sense. Is he, is he going no, for it? No, he's not. He is. No, he's not. He is going no, for it. No, he's not. He's not. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, oh. No, no, no. Oh my god. <laughs> Anything he said would have gone down in Dota 2 history. And God, if it wasn't the perfect uh, response to that moment. The best commentators are the ones that can actually entertain the crowd and more importantly, create the memories. When that one amazing play comes along, you have to elevate that to become memorable for eternity. She's very active, smiley, happy, all the time energized. You think, wow, where does she get all this energy? Who is this bitch? <laughs> Casey. Casey is, uh, I mean, she, she's, she's an, in, what, what do you call it, the hostess? My job at TI, is to make the players look good. I want to know how they're feeling in the moment and allow the audience to get to know them in perhaps a way they haven't yet. How are you feeling about the tournament so far? What, what has been the, the highlight for you? Um, having a diarrhea every single day. <laughs> what was that? Having a diarrhea every single day. Oh. Yeah. 
That sounds lovely. I'm going to send it back to James. Thank you again. <laughs> I say it's nice. He's just really good at making situations awkward. You didn't mean diarrhea. You mean diary. Like you wrote your diary this morning. And they're like, nope, diarrhea. Oh, God. Folks, I heard him right. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew it made me feel uncomfortable. And I respect him for that. She was really good at taking the awkwardness and making it really funny. You rolling? How about now? How about now? We rolling? When you're first talking to them, players take a little bit of time to warm up to you. And then you ask them to scream, you expect them to go, <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> you win. <laughs> I was sent to the players' lounge to interview Ice Ice Ice. And keep in mind, I don't know anything about the game. I haven't been watching it. I don't recognize the professional players. So you're going to be playing tonight in the one-on-one -on -one championship, is that right? Uh, that's correct, yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Um, th are you Ice Ice Ice? Uh, no. What's your name? I'm, I'm not. Are you Michael? No, they're trolling you. This entire room is going... <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Hmm? That's right. I, like, immediately went back to when I was in middle school and everybody was laughing at me for something. I have no idea what it was. There's something going on here that I'm not aware of. One of the hardest interviews to do is if you're talking to someone who does not want to speak to you, is it that they are nervous? Or is it that they just don't want to frickin' talk to me right now? He's like, yes, please move on. All right, duly noted. Um, I'm gonna stand up and move. There's so much trolling, I don't even know how to navigate this. I don't mind looking stupid, I don't mind looking silly, I don't mind looking bad, but I never want to make someone that I interview look bad. Casey is doing great, like she's doing great for the scene. When she comes to TI, she interacts with these crazy ass fans. I think she does a good job understanding people and getting people to, to open up a little bit. I want to get trolled by Ice Ice Ice. I've been trolled by Ice Ice Ice. He's really good at it. My job is to also give a voice to the fans and give them an opportunity to come together as a community and connect with the players. You can't be afraid to not look polished. I'm anti-polish. Be yourself, be in the moment, show how you're feeling. If I had a time machine, I would go back to 10-year-old me and I would start playing Dota 2. And I would be here as a player and I would be going for $18 million. And y'all be interviewing me and you'd ask me questions. And I'd say, I don't know, I have diarrhea. The All-Star matches are always fun at TI. This is where, you know, everybody gets to have fun from player's perspective and fan's perspective. The community could vote for players and 10 players who would get most votes would play five against five. You, you really, really appreciate it, especially when you not show something because then you remember it. <laughs> it means more, right? It's just this good feeling that you know that you're appreciated. Then被就是能被邀请去那个打明星赛，其实我觉得就对自己来说就非常非常兴奋吧，因为我是一个明星，很喜欢那个就是有写着我名字的那件T恤，然后但是我还是比较喜欢玩，不喜欢单口。就是
，所以当时我觉得娱乐的时候，我买圣剑。我还是要继续全水训练他们，然后啊，证明我虐了你们。但是输了那场游戏过后，竟竟然开心，但是又有一种丢脸的感觉。我对明星赛的印象，我觉得现在是做的越来越娱乐了，因为本来就大家不是为了输赢就，然后就做的越来越有趣了。Of course, you want to win it, still, you know. You, you don't want to, you know, be the all-star team that loses. 就是如果被大家都看好的情况下，其实压力是挺大的啊。如果有一场表现不好，或者说最后的成绩不好，就是整个心态不一样嘛，会比较容易崩溃吧，我觉得。Maybe OG felt the pressure. That's why we lost against TNC. We had played TNC before many times, and there was no doubt in our mind and in their minds also that we were the better team. But they have this fire going for them. It's scary. It's it's really scary to play these teams because they have nothing to lose. You underestimate a team. You. Don't play your best just because you feel it's going to be, um, quote unquote, you know, a free win. But that free win is a free loss. That's what happens. I think the Red Team's strength is to have an unique approach to the past. I think DC is what they were doing the most at TI. It's really focusing on split pushing. I could count five teams or even ten. Teams that will be ahead of DC, but they they go to the grand finals. Misery, congratulations! How does it feel to take down the TI5 champs? Holy shit, dude! <laughs> that was a crazy ass game. I always learn a lot watching these dark horses. Usually, people just go to them and like, "How did you make that happen?" How are you able to do that up against them? And they always answer like, "We don't know," and then they say something, but they actually know. So yeah, I don't know. And what they say right after that we don't know is usually the key to the, the success they just had. We kind of pulled uh, some tricks in the draft that made them believe that a core hero was a core when in fact it was a support all along. DC went on like one of those crazy OG loser bracket win streaks. Once a team gets in the booth and they get used to the feeling of winning, it's kind of hard to stop them. These kind of teams, they have a flow going on. It's uh, something very unique and they just roll throughout the tournament. 像 CDC 这支队伍的话，我觉得他是历届所有就是 TI 系列赛中，我觉得是最大的一匹黑马，因为他们是从外卡赛杀进来的一支亚军队伍，并且这支队伍的五个人全是第一次打 TI。They struggled in the wild cards. They did. They they almost didn't make it. We did play them even、uh, one month before TI, and you know we 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 just beat the crap out of them. And then one month later, they go to the international and they beat the crap out of everyone else. What a letter's curse from Q demolishes two more. I don't know how, but they gave us Cedek again and again with the upsets. They just caught every team off guard, and I, I think that's just like a perfect definition of what a dark horse is. I think every、uh, year there's been an underdog that has impressed me. One of the really hardworking teams from the open qualifiers just seems to surprise everyone. So <laughs> I don't know what team that'll be. Dark horses just play a different kind of、uh, Dota too. They teach you a lesson. They teach you two lessons. It's very inspiring. 
it's like a Cinderella story. And when you get those teams starting to beat ours, we showed everyone in the world that everyone can do it. I think for any team that is in the finals, that's just 100% focus. You know that you're the two best teams in the world. Either of you could win. It's a very weird feeling. It, it, it feels like you need to win this with all your soul and, and body and mind. You know, like everything that you've achieved in Dota and that you've done in Dota has built up until this moment. Some people maybe feel pressured. Kraut was always very mm, friendly to us. The crowd would help us a lot. Big scene is good for us, but for someone else, I don't know, it's different. 50,000, 500,000, 2 million people are watching, like, okay, that's great. It's a lot of pressure. Playing with thousands of spectators watching you, you're more prone to make mistakes because you're thinking about it more. Just keep your cool and not let any distractions such as the crowd or, you know, the pressure get to you. Guarantee you someone else on the other team will let it get to them, so if you're able to keep your cool, you're probably going to win. Dota is a sick mental game. It brings out the best and the worst in you. Who ended up winning the Mental Warfare always won the series. That's how you're going to win tournaments. That's how you win the tournament. If you break the other mind, it gets really easy. Some minds are really hard to beat, though. Well, at TI5, I had no anxiety. Like, I was totally comfortable in my own skin, and I think that I played really well, and everything was great. But then I go to the Summit 4, you know, this $100,000 tournament versus this $18 million tournament. I'm sitting there in the finals, down 0-2 against VP, and I'm just, like, having trouble breathing. It's weird like that, and you don't know when anxiety is going to hit you. If you're freaking out, you know, somebody else is probably freaking out, too. Just a screw up in the game, you made a mistake in the game and that's why you lost. Those things uh, can happen, but those things should not eat you. Sadly, a lot of people end up thinking about their loss a lot, because they could have done better. To lose in finals, just one step before winning, it's hit you much harder. It doesn't matter if we lose or not. Just those words remind us of what we've done and that we don't need to be afraid of losing. It sounds like um, maybe not a winning uh, mentality, but I think it's opposite. You remove the fear of losing, so you would not be afraid to do uh, risks, which can be very necessary in these games. I hadn't won a lot in my career up until, you know, pre-TI4. But then after we started winning, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a different kind of scene for me. You got more fans, you got more prestige, everything changes when you start winning. Things just worked out for us and TI5 was our tournament to win. That was one of two tournaments we won throughout that entire year and it was the big one. Yeah, 你会很后悔当时没有好好的享受 The strongest players doesn't win, it's the strongest team that wins and it's almost always like that If you don't perform every second of your games you might lose to a team that's actually not better than you but they're just hungrier 
I don't think any Dota player will go into these games and crumble under pressure. This is when you get your strongest. This is when it's going to be the hardest to break you. I strongly believe that if I woke up a morning and I had to play the TI final, I would play the best Dota of my life. And that's all that would matter to me. If I played my very best, nothing else would matter. Five minutes to curtain. Okay, new guy. Thank you very much. We We're know. professionals. We know when the show starts. We know time. Thank you. We can tell time. You can give me a coffee though. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah uh, thanks make a lot. that too. Thank you. We'll thanks give you an autograph later. Who the hell is that guy? No idea. Whew! The International Seven. You ready for this? Ain't no problem. Some tools and a few strong backs can't solve. Hey, that's Meepo. You actually know the game this year. <laughs> know the game? Practically the Dota Queen. <sighs> yes. Finally. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, who's your favorite character? Hero, yeah. not character. Nice. And that would be Meepo of the Timbersaw Meepos. And my MMR is Platinum. Platinum. You didn't actually play the game, did you, Casey? Did you know there's an entire wiki page filled with Meepo oh, responses? please, just stop. What's this? Oh, a little something I've been working on. Oh. Okay. I call it Dodo Immersive Mode. Turbo tutorial set, and in just a couple of minutes, we. We don't have a couple of minutes, okay? Wanna, yeah, shut up, all right? All right, well, now you're just being a jackass. Don't ever call me a jackass. Okay, psycho. What's the big deal? Look, when I was growing up, I had these growth spurts. I was awkward, my teeth were too big, and I kind of smelled. The kids would call me Donkey Boy, and then jackass and sometimes they would just call me jakeass even my grandfather my sweet pep pep even he called me jackass <laughs> hey it's not funny <laughs> they followed me around for years i'm sorry i'm sorry i had no idea it's fine let's just play okay Let's kick some ass, Jake ass. All right. Dude. <laughs> Your action smacks. Ow. Oh. oh, it's like I'm fighting a skeleton. Huh?不管你姓什么名什么从哪来到哪去我也不管我是输还是赢我现在想的就是我们要放开了打谁来我们都不怕Top 12. Did we do anything special? Dude, all this shit because of one series we lost? I know, but like... <laughs> it's better you fuck! It's no, better I mean, to play a lower bracket. Yeah, we we practice, got a lot of practice in. Yes. We learned a lot. I learned a lot. Learned a lot. So that's nice. Upper brackets for bitches! Yeah! <laughs>
，也不用打太怂，我觉得我们打，我觉得我们打老边可以把优太怂了，我觉得放开放开打，觉得自己敢去锤，然后 K B 开始多多报信息说能不能锤，能不能锤，我随时可以参战，然后我们来制定战术，还行，但是这种情况不能拿到先知，不然我们先拿进先知，他们他们是牛的光法，或者我玩赏金去帮你砍人，我去做不是眼。要不我来凑合一下玩一下赏金。Don't forget our motto. Don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. The less fucks we give, the better we will play. And when you go to the stage, no. When the moment we walk on the stage, I want you all guys to take deep breaths while you walk. Get the air. You know when boxers are like, oh, I need to like smell the air and get used to it. It is real. Get the air into your body. Get used to the air. Take deep breaths. I just like to remind you guys, this is our only TI finalist speaking, so he's an authority. I waited four fucking years for this day. Guys, this time we're gonna rewrite yes. history. Yeah. Oh, uh, cool, bro. Eh? This time it's different. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the This guy is gonna outdraft. He's gonna outdraft you. Be empowered. Only Maroon empowers me. What? What do you mean? I I don't like him very much. Yeah, me too. Actually, I'm gonna throw him. No, 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 no. We should take him. If you throw, I'm throwing with you. All right, let's throw. We have to do. It doesn't matter what we do. Throw or win. Let's do it together. That's the most important thing. Do one thing together. Get ready to make some noise, because our first team is about to head to the main stage. Join me in welcoming, from China, Nubi! They're no strangers to eSports, they are Team Liquid! Let's do it for Kuro boys. Let's go Kuro boss. I'm very confident guys. Nice, nice. We are too, boy. Draft begins. Now they're one and two, we're going to play what? Now we're going to put the Xenzi out. Don't put the Xenzi out. 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 I don't want to deal with Earthquake guys. The first game we lost in SFA was the only because of fucking Earthquake. New bees turn to bands. Because they they don't want to take our game. Yes. Because they are afraid of our Tumor Tumor Jia Xuan Bo. So you can't get it. Yes. Yes. They are afraid of our Tumor Jia Xuan Bo. So they take two. No. Tell me. I think I can. I think I can take a bull. Then the problem is solved. We can we can change the route. Team Liquids turn to pick. We can pick Prophet. No. And then we can decide what we want. You are pro Prophet. Yeah. Just pick Prophet and then we'll see what we want. Are you sure though? I I'm very confident. They might just go Sven straight up. Fuck them. You know, like last time I played TI Finals, I had to play against First Pick Prophet all the time. I'm First Pick it myself. These guys don't notice I have already influenced you into Lone Druid and Prophet and Io. Maroon, you promised to cry if you win. I didn't want it. What did I just say? No, no. I don't. Hey, stop. Stop thinking about winning. Focus on this game. Okay, sir. Come on, come on. Let's play. 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 How oh, Troll? Troll is great because we need Roshan and high ground. Yes. Jack gives Roshan. If you believe in Jack, I'll go. I think Jack is strong. I do believe in Jack. I think Jack is good. I think he's a good hero. He can carry this game. Look at you. You have summoned Juggernaut. Or if you think you're going to win, I think I'll win. 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 哎，快点，陈哥跟谁个？你选一个，我点了，没时间了。就这个，就这个，就这个。我觉得，就这个，我觉得你王太乱了，我，我觉得还。Our fighting is very strong, so let's just push out waves and keep fighting them. 
I think this is Newbie's best draft for the finals. If they can't win this game, then Liquid is just hands down the better team today. Miracle, where's that follow up? Have they got the stun? They do, so there's no spin available with Spirit Cypher. Miracle just has to take the physical damage. That was, uh, that was unfortunate. Wow, Boogie. Even trying to surge GH away from that fight. Gale going to connect on his target, there's CCC. If you play going up on the hill, realize no one else is there from Team Liquid. There is smoke, there is smoke top. There's the Sempete though, and this will be the kill. The Shackles hold him there. That's a huge kill. Miracle to fall with Boogie already up. So they got all three tier ones at 12 minutes, which is a very good timing, but not really too much of a gold lead to show for it. Look, here, here, here. Search me. He's here, he's here. Oh, not tonight. Nice one. Not tonight, boys. Not tonight. No one's defending this. I'll even burn exorcism of SCCC to ensure this yeah, Roshan goes yeah, down yeah, very, very quickly. They're rushing, they're rushing. No moves formation, only Jagger in front. Only Jagger in front. Liquid, they are coming. Oh, Going in. Massive was it down two, but the anchor is left! Nice, and the big advantage that Newbie had just disappeared. What got Luan Tanya Holland? I'm not going to go to the next one. I'm not it's a huge ask. They have to defend, and they know they've lost control of this game. The gold graph is swung by about 10,000 in favor of Team Liquid, not to mention the experience graph racking up about 12k to 13k movement. Check runes, check runes. Might be a very good rune. Did he, did he force me, force me, force me for it. It's a reaction talking what's all about. Miracle, the bar is right from Kaka. It'll connect all up, bitch, for KP. He'll get us on the mass and walk the field. Oh, they, they, they will jump. Yep, 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 yep. Miracle, the anchor is left there from GH on the only side. And that is Jalp was tripping with the side. SCC is gone for two minutes. But right now it's all liquid, liquid, liquid. They have taken down four. Would lose nothing, but take everything from Newbie. No, oh, that was a mess. That was a little bit too close for my taste. Bottom racks. Yeah, go. And then we take top racks. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay boss. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, they're fucking up. They fucked up. Look at the worst position. Me, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look, look at the worst position. Heal, heal, heal. I have healing ward. Guys, look heal, at the worst heal. positioning. Yes. yes. It's bad for them. Yeah, relax. My fucking team hates me. Enjoy ourselves. It's gonna be very nice now. Look, I'm gonna put a ward here. Be ready. You gonna touch me? Bro, they are not slow.
I really love to compete. It's my passion, it's my hobby, it's, it's my love in some ways. I chose computer games because uh, I had some complications with my legs and my feet from birth on. So I had like uh, walking problems when I was a child. It was very hard because when you're young, you have a lot of energy. So you want to like, you know, do sports or walk around. And I couldn't really do that. When I walked for like 30 minutes, my, uh, my legs just like couldn't work anymore. I had to like sit down. So I kind of like escaped into like video games. And over the years, I've grown to love video games more than anything else. So I kept going at it. Ugani, 下一次 